Hi, my name's Rob Ross Russell, Dr. Ross Russell. I am the Director of Studies in Medicine at Peterhouse. I'm a paediatrician up at Addenbrooke's Hospital, but my responsibilities in college uh, are to interview and select students, uh, to organise uh, supervisions over the first three years for the uh, preclinical undergraduate students and to do some of those supervisions myself uh, and also to look after the clinical students uh, when they move on to Addenbrooke's for the second half of their training. So it's a great honour to be here today who have been asked to do some mock interviews for uh, the blogs or vlogs that uh, Jade and uh, Kubukani do for Asclepium and what I'm going to do uh, in the next moments is to bring in a student for an interview uh, we're going to do a mock interview. The students, the two students I'm uh, interviewing, um, have both volunteered uh, to do this. One is in the second year, one is in the third year. Um, and I'm very grateful for them for coming and reliving the uh, terrors of the uh, interview. And what we want to do with this is to give you a taste of what an interview might feel like uh, when you come up, hopefully to Cambridge, hopefully to Peterhouse, to apply to do medicine. Uh, the first candidate I'm going to be uh, interviewing here is Shumana Anil. She is in her third year here at Peterhouse. She's very kindly agreed to come in and uh, do a mock interview. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, revisiting our encounter of uh, some years ago. Oh, hi, Shumana. Hi, Dr. Russell. Hi. Uh, come and have a seat over here, if you would. OK. Brilliant. Uh, this is Jade Stevenson, okay. who is interviewing Hello. with me. Nice I'm Rob Ross Russell. Uh, I'm the Director of Studies here in Peterhouse, mm -hmm. and this is your first interview, I think, isn't it? It is, yes. It is, okay. So you're going to have a series of interviews today, um, and each interview will be with two people, and what we're going to do is run through, it's going to be mostly sciencey questions right the way through, um, and at the end of it you'll get a chance to ask us a question if you wish to, but you okay. certainly don't need to, um, and then we'll, uh, that'll be the end of it, and we will be in touch with you in due course. Okay. Is that yeah. right? Yes, okay. that's wonderful. Now, I think that you had the one of the cases to have a look at, is yes, that right? Yes, I did. So, we've given you a case, you've had half an hour with mm -hmm. computer, with phone, with internet access to look through the mm -hmm. data that we've given you, and there's a series of questions. Which case did yes. you get? So, I had the case with Jack, who has cystic fibrosis. Okay. And what I'd like to do is pick, we've given you a series of questions, I'd like to pick on question one, mm -hmm. which was about carriage. So yes. I, I asked you about Jack's brother, who does not have cystic fibrosis, and the risks he has of having a child in the future with cystic fibrosis. So mm -hmm. what did you, how did you get on with that? Okay, so the question says that if the carriage rate for the mutation in the general population is 1 in 25, what are the risks of his brother having a child with CF in the future? So Jack himself has a 1 in 2 chance of having cystic fibrosis okay. and his partner will have a 1 in 25 chance because that's what it says yeah. in the question. So, oh sorry, Jack Jack has cystic fibrosis, sorry. Yeah, his brother. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so his brother would have two chances. And so, um, so they have a child, so that would be a 1 in 50 chance and there's a one in four chance of this child having cystic fibrosis, so one over 50 times one over four, one Which over is, 200. Okay, so you're saying that the chances of them both being carriers are one in 50, mm -hmm. and therefore the chance of having a baby, well done, is, is only a quarter of that because mm -hmm. there's only a one in four chance. So computation is correct, but the answer is wrong okay. because one of those figures is incorrect. So let's just okay. go backwards and think about that. So talk me through various um, assumptions you made. Okay, so I'm, it says in the question that the carriage rate is 1 in 25. Correct, so, so that's, that's fixed. Fine. Yep. Um, then I've assumed that the brother has a 1 in 2 chance of having cystic fibrosis. So have a little think about that. Wow. Um, Oh, I see. So he has a 12-year-old sister who is also affected. So and a 10-year-old brother who does yeah. not have the disease. So what do we know about the brother? What what's the what's the genetic makeup of the brother? So if you use your the big X's and little X's yeah. or big C's and little C's, what do you got? So cystic fibrosis is, is a recessive. Um, Correct. Need a recessive gene, and um, so. 
the brother is going to be a carrier. So he could be a carrier. Or he could have um, metamorphosis. Okay. So let's think about the chances of each of those. What, what are the options that are open to him? Okay, so he could either be, um, I mean, what letter should we, should we say? C, 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 little C. Okay, big C, um, little C. So he could either be big C, little C, yep. or big C, big C. Yeah. Um, and are they divided 50-50? Because you said he had a 50% chance. Do you think that's right? No, that's not right. No, because? I say that. Because it could either be big C, little C, little C, big C, or big C, big C. Okay. So he could have a three and four. Uh, oh. Three and four? What option? There's only uh, three options I there. I see, so it would be the same, the other way around. Okay, it'd so it would be two and three. Two and three, because we know he's not got CF. So we've got mm -hmm. a two and three chance. Mm -hmm. So do you want to recalculate your figures now? Okay, so if he has a... The brother has a two and three chance of having cystic fibrosis, and his partner has a one in 25 chance, then that would be... Two in seventy-five. Yeah. Chance. Okay. And then. Um, and then, what are the risks of his brother having a child with CF in the future? So then we have the one in four. Correct. Coming in. So pop that in. So that will be one over one hundred and fifty. Spot on. That's the right answer. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'd like to move to something else now. We've got. Um, I've got here. A paper. I'm not looking for a detailed analysis. This is a paper by a lady called Ingrid Wolf. It's a, a paper that's published a few years ago now. And in it, there's a table down here. So this is a table of uh, mortality. So this is the percentage uh, of deaths per 100,000 uh, children. And this is different countries across here. And then there's um, different axes. One is mortality, which is the red dots, which is what I want to look at. So I'd okay. like you to just spend a moment looking at that, okay. and then we'll just talk our way through what that might mean and what we might do about it. Okay. So what's the first thing you notice? Okay, so I can see that um, compared to all of the other European countries, the UK's mortality rate for children aged 0 to 15 with asthma is much, much higher. I mean sort of magnitude higher? Five times higher yeah. than, the, than the highest yeah. country, which is Spain. Which is Spain. So the UK seems to have a mortality in that age group from asthma that is five times that in the rest of Europe. Mm -hmm. Why, um, why might that be? And what I'd like to do is think in broad terms. So why, why might that not be correct? But also why might it be correct? And what might we do to think about that? Um, I mean, a reason why it could not be correct is if there's some kind of recording error. So perhaps, perhaps there's more surveillance in England for asthma. I don't know. Perhaps okay. the NHS um, monitors, it, mon monitors it more regularly. Okay. So, so we notice. might monitor it differently. What particular aspect of monitoring, where, where do you think that number comes from? Probably GPs, highly likely. Or well, where did that oh, number come from? The mortality. Aspect. Yes. Hospitals. Mm. Yes, I suppose. So death certificates. Oh, okay. So, okay, okay. so yes. it's going to depend on the death certificate, I think, mm -hmm. is, is okay. going to be where it comes from. So might that be different in different countries? It could be, um, but then given that all of these countries are you know, developed countries in Europe, I don't know, that's probably not likely. They okay. probably have similar standards. So, the, that, so that's the numerator. What about the denominator? Might that be different in different countries? Um, well, the denominator is per 100,000. So that's per 100,000 asthmatics? Uh, just children. Okay, children. So that's not really... So uh, I, I thought at first that this might be asthmatics, but you're quite. if it's children, there's not going to be a change. All right. So just to pursue that just a little bit further, okay. 
I'm going to make you Minister of Health for the UK and I'm going to slap that on your table on day one and say, you've got to sort this, Shumina. OK. What are we going to try and do about it? How are we going to go about fixing that sort of a problem? Um, I think, first of all, we'd have to address it at a primary care level. OK, good. So, at the level of the community. So, um, probably, especially with children, kind of standard checks in schools. So know how you would have kind of measles vaccinations like give to all children of a certain age in a similar way perhaps testing for asthma um, and diagnosing it at an early age and making sure these children have kind of drugs appropriate drugs given to them salbutamol that kind of thing or at least are on the record for having asthma and therefore are monitored in some kind of way Good. so at the primary Good. level um, also uh, well we're looking at mortality here so it's not just um, morbidity, it is mortality, so we need to address it um, at the level of where this is this is happening, so in the hospitals, so why why are we having this such a high number of, well, high proportion of deaths, perhaps it's something to do with the protocol, um, with our plan of action when an asthmatic child comes in, so we would have to review that and perhaps compare it to these other countries Good. where the mortality Good. rate is lower. Yeah. Um, I think it's very good. No, I think it's very good. One other aspect that's being picked up on is who is the person who sees the sick child first? Mm. And we have a general practitioner system and other countries have paediatricians who oh, see their children. And one of the suggestions of many has been that that might be a factor as well. Mm -hmm. no, that's, uh, that's very, very good. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. So I hope you enjoyed that interview with uh, Shumana. Uh, we asked questions that are very like the questions we will ask uh, in the interview itself. I thought she did well. I thought she was calm and uh, assured all the way through. I should jolly well hope so after three years of preclinical training here. Um, but um, quite deliberately, I asked her to get the first bit wrong. And indeed, I'd only given her that information just before we started. So I thought that she handled that well. So she came up with an answer that was incorrect. Um, and she took a little bit of time to work her way through to why it was that the uh, numbers were incorrect. But she got there. And she did it calmly. And even though she paused and she stuttered ever so slightly, she pulled herself back up. She settled down. So I thought she handled that uh, very well. Her questions around the uh, graph that I gave her were also good. She picked up quickly that there was a big difference. She had slightly different areas that she wanted to look at in terms of why that mattered. But that doesn't, that's fine. I think it's really finding an area of interest that the applicant has and then exploring that. So I thought she did that very well. So overall, a good interview.